Hey everyone, hope they're having a good day. My name's Andy, channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna to go through Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. Uh, I'll interject my financial opinions as we go through it, generally related to three different topics. Wealth building, commodities, and or financial topics, generally what we cover. Uh, so let's dive in there, let's dive straight into it and see what people are talking about. Uh, if you wanna follow me, it's at underscore finance, and if you wanna join our community, finding-value.com, where I dive deeper into all these sectors, looking for potential investment opportunities. Uh, I'm also building my portfolio right in front of people uh, if you are interested to see how I would do it. Uh, so I'm doing that and I've actively uh, made an update to that if you're interested. Uh, HFI Research, he says, this week's US commercial crude draw came in at 6,000 barrels below our estimate. We are on pace to reach 415 million barrels. Uh, so this is U.S. crude storage. You can see the big drawdowns that we are occurring in 2024. And we're almost at really low levels, and maybe we're going to hit all-time low levels for U.S. crude storage. Uh, I do find some of this data, um, it's pretty accurate, I think, for the most part. But sometimes some of the revisions that the uh, IEA or EIA um, does, a little bit suspicious what I'll say sometime, uh, but it's really low right now. We already have a huge deficit and it's just gonna get bigger. The squeeze is on for silver. Uh, this is, uh, wait, it says in 2023, silver demand outpaced supply for the third consecutive year with the 2024 supply demand gap projected to widen by 17%. Industrial demand hit a record high, rising 11% to 655 million ounces. Thanks to gains in green economy applications, particularly photovoltaics. Uh, this is silver uh, supply demand 2015, 2024 forecast. Uh, and that's what we've got here going forward. And you can see the big move in uh, demand for physical silver. <clears throat> Total supply is down here. We are down minus 4% in supply. Uh, mine production is here. This must be recycling above it. <clears throat> and then we've got total demand way above it. We are running deficits. SILJ, so talking about silver, uh, SILJ to $30 seems quite reasonable. And this is a falling wedge upside. Did a little retest here recently. His projection is the size of the move up is the size of the move up there. So yeah, 30 bucks, then it's reasonable. Here's another one of SILJ, a little bit longer picture view. <clears throat> it says SILJ is currently with its second largest monthly wick of all time. The past two large wicks led to price going three times within the preceding year. These were big bottoming patterns with these big wicks at the bottom here. Uh, we've come on up, we've had a big wick. This is probably a retest is what I would say. And yeah, I think we're ready to go higher. Uh, so SILJ is looking absolutely fantastic. Um, coming up to the top here, let me hit refresh because there's, I think I missed one. Yeah, I missed Tobby's here. Um, I want to go over two versus the 10 year spread is about to uninvert. Uh, this is the driver of silver going higher. That's what's driving it. Um, I used to listen to all these YouTube guys, all these experts, and I didn't learn a lot from them. Uh, so what I did is I took this into my own hands, and I'm really I really dove into when does certain asset classes outperform, uh, and when the yield curve is inverted and uninverts. Uh, that's what I've learned in a lot of cases in history. Uh, obviously, you can also look at the supply and demand because that will also dictate when gold and silver will go up, uh, and everything right now looks absolutely phenomenal. Or move higher in gold and silver in terms of market conditions and in supply demand balances. He says the yield curve is sending a clear message about the potential direction of the economy in the near future, while markets continue to stubbornly ignore these signs. The reality is rate cuts late in the cycle have never ended well in history. And, and that's why we are seeing oil not bounce as much. <clears throat> it's because it's in the wrong market condition here. Any potential slowdown could come here in the short term. 
And that's what the yields are telling us. Um, what I want to say is the bond market is the leader. The equity market is the one that follows. So you don't want to get your cues from the equity markets. You want to get your cues from the bond market. This is your leader. This is smart money positioning. The equities will follow. So if this is positioning like this, a slowdown is most likely coming. And you cannot use equities to negate this setup. Uh, I know I hear a lot of people trying to talk about narratives of why this isn't the case. And he just said it here too. They stubbornly ignore these signs. And it's coming. That's why Buffett is selling stocks and sitting in cash. For the most part, not all in cash. But. And that's also why we've got low inventory, but we don't have strong equity pricing in oil. It's from the two and tens here, from the yields and bond market and the signals that it's selling. Uh, here's Garrett Gogg, and he says, holy moly, new Samsung electric battery consumes 32.2 ounces of silver. The total demand of 16,000 tons, or 467 million ounces, that's 58% of 800 million per year total silver production. I hope you're not still short, JP Morgan. I mean, so there, I guess there's these new batteries coming out that just use a ton of silver uh, in their solid state batteries here. So. Well, there goes your silver demand, I guess. Uh, here's U.S. electricity demand, very strong this summer. This is 2024 going on up, a little bit stronger than previous summer. And then you can see also how this cycles throughout the year. I just also wanted to bring that up, how electricity demand uh, and supply cycles. I guess this would just be demand. Uh, the recession ratio says it's starting to get similar to another previous pattern. <clears throat> Should we expect long-term bonds to rise while oil prices sector decline? This is TLT, which is bond prices, divided by XLE. So when this goes upward, TLT is outperforming XLE. Usually we see that during a crisis event. Uh, you could see in 2020, we had a crisis event here, crisis event here, and we could have maybe another crisis event coming in the future. Uh, that's where we see TLT start to outperform XLE, and it does look like we could potentially start breaking out here. Uh, what, what, what does this all mean? Why are we looking at this? Because a slowdown is probably coming, and we can use ratios and the way that assets behave at the beginning of a shift in the market, we can see it with ratios. So bonds outperforming XLE, which is an energy ETF, is definitely a recession sign if it does that. Here's the Bellwethers, the Great Marti, who is a bear. Counter trend moves depicted post mauling. Textbook behavior, patience won't be long. So here's Apple doing its breakout and then a um, return move or a retest of the breakout. Uh, we've got Amazon doing a very similar move, a big breakdown, and then a retest upward, and that's called a back test, and then a move lower. We've got Google doing something very similar to some of the other ones. We are coming on down. You can see the stair step pattern lower, uh, and then we'll probably pause there, maybe get a little bit of a move higher and head lower. He's probably got this pretty much right. And then here's Microsoft putting in its big pattern here and that potential lower move. Um, this also correlates with the uninversion of the yield curve, the two and 10 that we talked about up top and Avi was talking about. Seems like a lot of people are ignoring it. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. Be early. And if you want to seek safety, this is the time to do it. You don't wait until it happens afterwards. Uh, I would be doing it probably now. Uh, here's DBA, so this is the agriculture update, holding its bullishly aligned bi-weekly 12 and 20 moving week averages. May wish to backtest the pattern, yet be aware it already has the non-adjusted price chart. Individual softs, so those are soft commodities, are showing some bullish setups on the lower timeframes. 
So if not, it may be worth a look. And this is DGA Invesco Agricultural Fund, which is a shoulder head, shoulder potential bottom neckline and a broken neckline higher. As we could see this move on up. Now there is the possibility this does a back test here before going higher. It could do that. We've got break wave here. A rebound in crude volumes should begin in September as domestic demand in the Middle East and the U.S. Gulf Coast pulls back. As seen this market time and again, a negative sentiment may turn quickly. We expect rates to peak in December at around $80,000 per day with some spikes above that will that also possible in a bull case scenario provided that Red Sea evasion persists and oil demand and supply grow in line with key energy agency forecasts. We need to see the appetite and relative crude oil pricing improve before a sharper rate rally can commence. That's from trade winds there. Um, we do have a really cheap oil to gold ratio at this moment. Oil is very cheap, uh, but I think recession fears are creeping into those markets. So we may have to be patient for oil uh, to finally work its way on up, which will eventually increase in volumes uh, to ship. Because shipping and tanker rates are based off of volume flow. So it's the supply and demand of volume flow. And that's kind of what we need to look at there. A silver gained more than 300% on average in the last three rate cutting cycles. Are you ready? I am fully locked and loaded for this to occur, guys. Um, if you're part of the website, you know how bullish I am on these. And there are definitely investment opportunities to take advantage of this 300%. Now, there are some investments that smoked 300%. Um, some of them went up 10x in like five, six months <laughs> or less. Uh, those are some of the speculative companies. Uh, so I do think that's coming, and I think we're going to see a big move. Very big move. And you can see every time this is lowered here, basically, um, we get these big moves higher. I think it's coming. Patrick Karam says, a chart I've been posting for a long time now. Once again, gold front ran more U.S. purchasing power as defined by the DXY adjusted for the consumer price index. So this is the uh, gold price breaking out. This is the dollar falling lower adjusted for inflation. This is just an inverse chart. This is flipped this way as this one's domed upward. And really what gold is doing is the price of gold moves when the dollar moves. It's 100% determined by the denominator, which is the dollar. Rock bottom entries, he says, explosive setup leading into Jackson Hole. We are at a major inflection point for the space. Bullish rising moving averages. We're breaking towards the upper end of this rising wedge. Now, sometimes on a rising wedge, we can break to the upside. Uh, and we, we are, it looks like we're breaking this to the upside here. Bearish divergence, false breakout, or is momentum breaking out? That's what we're trying to figure out here with gold moving on up. <clears throat> I think we're breaking higher uh, because of the interest rates falling and a potential rate cut. Uh, Brandon says, down goes another major auto OEMs plan for electric vehicles. Ford cancels plans for electric SUV. It's almost, it's almost like it's impossible to make money on EVs without government subsidies, ZERP, low raw material prices. It's bullish for ICE hybrids and our boy Platinum Group Metals, which I really, really like. <laughs> Uh, Eric Nettle, do not let price set your narrative. U.S. oil inventories just hit a three-month low, while the big three inventories hit a four-month low. The market is hung up on a weak China and the possibility of a U.S. recession. Yet, on a net basis, global oil demand is fine. Well, remember, oil price is also a function of the future. So if a recession is coming, how would that impact the demand for oil? And most of the time, it doesn't really impact it that, that negatively unless you get a really big pullback in the economy. Uh, so most of the time, it's, it's generally pretty strong through oil demand. Looking at JSG, and this is his dot plot for commercial inventory of oil. 
says total commercial petroleum stocks, X other oils, is down about 7 million barrels week over week. The balance at lowest point since May 15th, three month low. The implied WTI fair value of $79 a barrel or $6 undervalued from current market price. Uh, so given where commercial inventory levels are and given the historical data, the average price at this commercial inventory level is priced at $79 and we are undervalued by six bucks. It's a good value looking at oil right now. Here's markets and mayhem. It says wild. If we price the S&P 500 in gold terms, we still haven't taken out the dot-com highs. So a lot of people look at this chart and they look at this, you know, working its way on up. Uh, and they're like, well, you know, maybe we'll get back to that dot-com high. I see a wedge forming here. It looks like a rising wedge that could potentially break to the downside where gold could outperform and go all the way back to the 1980 lows. That's the way that I view it. And the reason I view it that way is because of the market conditions. You have to go back to the market conditions. The inverted yield curve, the 2 and 10 uninverting, so the yield curve uninverting is good for gold, not for stocks. That is what you need to, to align with. It's not one chart. It's not one thing. You want to see a confluence of information across the entire market that, that, that aligns together. So I think that S&P will probably go down, and I think gold will go up. I'm looking at this going downward, not upward. Uh, and then there's the, the bullish draws that we got in the inventory levels of oil. Uh, Great Marti again, the Stealth QE. We've got all these things going on behind the scenes for the overnight repurchase agreements. What is going on there, Mr. QE? Is there something going on in the banking system? And this could come to light when rates drop. It almost is always, you know, synonymous with, hey, look, we're cutting rates. Hey, look, there's this problem. And then the market sells off and you get a really good buying opportunity. Uh, China imports 13.6 million ounces of silver in July. It looks pretty high there compared to other uh, areas. So July, killing it for net imports. Uh, and that's what we've got for today, guys. So that's where we're going to end it. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got a question and answer session coming up on Sunday, 5 p.m. Mountain Time. I'll see everyone there. I'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.